Tides are shifting. Oil companies say Tesla is the most productive OEM in the US. Want to find out the truth in this video? Make sure to stay tuned until the end. Welcome to Elon Musk era. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on our upcoming videos about Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, and more. It was predicted on countless occasions that battery-powered sedans, pickups, and SUVs would replace gas-guzzling, emission-producing models. But the shift to electric vehicles is finally starting to take place. Tesla is not the only automotive pioneer and market leader considering a switch to electric vehicles. But pretty much every major automaker is doing the same. And it is not just a big deal for consumers, but for auto dealerships across the country who will have to get on board with the electric future. Further, Tesla held their earnings call a short time ago, and as was forecast, they broke all record after record. In response, oil companies claim that the tides are turning and that the global BEV market doubled last year. And GM CEO Mary Barra, embarrassingly, has also come out with a new claim. So what does the new claim say? Those claims are fundamentally incorrect. And we have a new Tesla product. And the factory in Vermont is now the most productive in the United States. Additionally, Tesla just held its earnings call. And as expected, it was a record-setting one yet again. With this, Tesla's revenue for 2020 was $17.7 billion. The automotive gross margin for the entire year was 30.6%. And this is one of the biggest increases in automotive gross margins since 2020. Moreover, Tesla's debt were paid off for $1.2 billion, and now it has about $5.2 billion left. Even though they have paid off all their debt, they still maintained around $1.5 billion in the bank. And now it has over $17.2 billion in the bank. There was just over $4 billion in revenue in Q4 alone and over $11.6 billion in revenue for the whole year. That is almost as much for EBITDA in 2021 as Tesla had in revenue. So all in all, this seems like an incredibly well-run business, and as Tesla wrote, they have enough liquidity to fund their product roadmaps, long-term capacity expansion plans, and any other expenses. Additionally, as of now, Tesla has no financial problems and is very successful and a well-run company. In addition, another great milestone Tesla reached was this chart which shows that the company is now a fully profitable business. Not just Tesla is profitable every quarter, but it is profitable even if we take into account all their costs and losses in the beginning. And that is a pretty remarkable achievement. Furthermore, they were also able to grow their battery storage by 32% in 2021, but only by 4 gigawatt hours, and now are building a 40 gigawatt hour pack factory that will probably skyrocket like crazy in 2022. From a couple of thousand full-driving, self-driving beta testers last quarter, Tesla has now more than 60,000 in quarter 4, which is impressive. Now that Tesla has 60,000 beta test users, we get to collect so much more data than anyone else. Tesla, meanwhile, discuss how they will have 31,500 superchargers worldwide and are adding them every day. Likewise, the Tesla Model Y that comes from Giga Texas begins with a 4680 cell, but not the Model Y from Berlin. In addition to this, Tesla has started deliveries of the Model Y out of Texas this quarter, with Elon saying that 2021 was Tesla's breakthrough year. The company is now the only OEM in the world with a positive operating margin. Furthermore, electrified vehicles are more profitable and viable than ever, and there are no excuses to ignore them. In the last few years, all sales of Tesla electric vehicles have been the company's primary product, which has allowed Tesla to maintain as the OEM with the highest operating margin in the industry. However, one thing is for sure, Wall Street is not going to believe this. Because Tesla spoke of fully autonomous driving and the Tesla robot. Therefore, when this happens, they just tune out. As a result of this, I believe that Tesla's future is so important and so very interesting. However, there might not be enough time for us to fully grasp it. And this is why Tesla's stocks tend to decline after an earnings call, even though they are always announcing records everywhere. Moreover, the year 2021 proved to be a breakthrough year for electric vehicles. And charging stations, however, appeared to reach a tipping point in the year 2021. Further, Reuters reported that BP plans to increase its fast EV charges, which it will put up at gas stations to become more profitable than filling up gasoline-powered vehicles. In addition to this, 
BP's head of customers and product consultants said that if I compare a tank of fuel with a fast charge, the business fundamentals for fast charging are improving overall compared to those of fossil fuels. With the rapid rise in EV charging demand and profitability, just a few years ago, this wasn't the case. Additionally, the expansion of EVs and their associated charges has been losing money for BP in the past, but now there is a shift in these ties. And by 2030, BP will have over 70,000 charges, up from today's over 11,000 charges. Also, we recognize that fast charging represents a huge opportunity for consumers and businesses alike. As they say, and the growth margins are mainly seen in those areas. Tesla is a good example of what this is like. By 2023, they want to have 90,000 superchargers and not 2030. But BP is talking about it as the growth area and a new business opportunity. Furthermore, Tesla's decision to expand the charging network and open the door to other electric vehicles is making good financial sense due to the current margins. In addition to being a big competitor to BP, Tesla will become a major player in new electric world fueling stations. Then, another big player in the oil industry that has seen the light is Shell. Further, there are even more aggressive plants in China than in BP, and 500,000 charging points are planned by 2025. So the tides really are shifting. And Europe also received its last few numbers from December. Like in September, the Tesla Model 3 became Europe's top-selling car of any kind in December as well. Therefore, Tesla's Model 3 is the best-selling vehicle in Europe for the last month of the last two consecutive quarters. Thus, not only was it the first time in history, it was unprecedented when Tesla Model 3 took the number one spot in Europe in September. Nevertheless, the Tesla Model 3 did it again within three months. And as a result, it became the best-selling electric vehicle in Europe in 2021, with 113,000 units sold and followed by the little sorry with just over 61,000 units sold. So for the top spot in Europe, there was no longer any competition. And with just 6,000 units ahead of Tesla, the Volkswagen did indeed end up as the top EV brand in Europe. Meanwhile, when Tesla no longer has transport cars from China but can build cars in its Giga Berlin factory constantly, it'll be very interesting to see how it will perform. Then, from the earnest call that these Model Y from the Berlin factory will only get 4680 sales after the battery factory and the Berlin factory are completed, and the Berlin factory are completed. However, I doubt this will significantly affect the sales of the Model Y, even though it only had one and a half quarters in Europe. Model Y ended up being the 13th best-selling electric vehicle in 2021 in Europe. Hence, it'll be interesting to see how Tesla does in Europe if they come out on top of Volkswagen this year, and if the BEV market doubles from 2020 to 2021. And this did not include hybrids, only BEVs. I think we are at the beginning of an S-curve, and there won't be an increase in car sales in 2022, as there were about 66 million vehicles sold in 2021. Further. Toyota has announced that they will not be able to reach their targets for 2022 due to a chip shortage. I do believe that between 8 to 10 million BEVs will be sold this year. By the end of this year, BEVs will probably hold something like 12 to 15% of the market share. It would be more than double this year since 12 of 16 million vehicles sold would be 7.8 million BEVs, which is far too few. With more than doubling of the market share over the next few years, this could already be four or five times higher than it was only two years ago. What a phenomenal growth rate! This is not a linear curve, but a steep S-curve. Some thought GM, Toyota, EDC are not making BEVs fast enough. Someone like the Chinese will likely step in and help supply the EV demand if they don't hurry up. Additionally, as Tesla almost did 1 million last year, and they expect to do 1 million again within 4-5 to five years, Tesla should just stop every single thing they do and don't turn on the last two factories they have built and stop their growth. The growth of Tesla has only accelerated. So, for GM CEO, Mary Barry, to say that she believes 1 million BEVs in 2025 will come close to catching Tesla in 2025 is totally out of touch with reality. As if GMs are trying to blind anything outside of their little bubble. Further, Tesla will sell between 1.5 and 2 million vehicles this year, making this embarrassingly wrong already. 
and making it true that Tesla is indeed the most productive OEM in the US. That's all for this video about the tides shifting. Oil companies say Tesla is the most productive OEM in the US. And thanks for watching. If you would like to receive updates on Elon Musk and his companies, make sure you click the subscribe and bell button.